I told you, not you, but the, our listening audience in August that Darnell Wright was the best football player on that team. And I firmly believe that when it's all said and done, even if, if some balls continue to develop and our top 10 picks in the future, which I believe will happen, that at the end of the day, we'll look back at the 2022 team and we'll, we will say to ourselves that Darnell Wright was one of the best players on that team. I believe that firmly. Caleb, am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Totally agree with you. We saw it in real time. Anybody that was watching last year, and it's funny because offensive line is one of the hardest positions to really evaluate when you're watching a college football game in real time because you're always looking downfield. So you have to go back and watch the tape. But it was weird that Alabama game, Darnell Wright was standing out on his own, even though everybody was looking downfield watching him and hook a throw, throw to Jalen Hyatt. I remember watching that game. I'm sure you did too. And do you remember about like halfway through being like, I haven't heard Will Anderson's name yet. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 you know, it wasn't just from, it wasn't just from a sacks perspective that we didn't hear, hear his name. Uh, I thought that some of the assessment last night, Will Anderson was really poor um, in some of the broadcasts. I, I don't call out other media members, so I'm not going to do that, even if they're big national cats and serve it. But I, I will tell you this. Um, will Anderson is great at tackles for a loss against the run. What makes him different from, let's say, uh, uh, Kim DJ or we could go on, Avon Miller, that name came up last night during the broadcast, is he is equally as good against the run as he is against the pass. He is a generational type of talent because he's going to be stout against the run and he's going to get you about 10 or so sacks. Probably not 20 in a year, but he's going to get you about 10 or so sacks a year. So in that way, he's a generational type player, but not appreciated unless you're kind of a football aficionado. Um, but Darnell Wright, man, against the run, against the pass, Caleb, it didn't matter. Absolutely manhandled him and i think that helped darnell wright go number 10 last night in the draft i think that game was as big as any single factor in wright's evaluation oh absolutely absolutely that game was the game that stood out above every other game darnell wright it's funny it's the game that made jalen hyatt a blitnikoff award winner it's the game that made darnell wright a first round draft pick any and we, you're right, you had said it in August, and we had been talking all year about just how valuable Darnell Wright was on that right side of the line. And for anybody that questions that, look at Hooker's sack totals. Two years ago, Hendon Hooker was one of the most sacked quarterbacks in college football when Darnell Wright was playing left tackle and Cade Mays was at right tackle. They moved Darnell Wright to right tackle, and they rotated at left tackle, and Hendon Hooker was so much more protected last year. Now, Dave, I don't know what you think. I don't know if some of that was Hendon Hooker just being much smarter and how he moved in the pocket. I'm sure that had a role to play in it, but I think the line was just better last year, even though Cade Mays wasn't there. And I think that had to do with Darnell Wright, that side of the line. No one was getting to Hooker on that side of the line at all. And, I mean, we're talking – you're right. We're talking generational talent. We have heard questions about his work ethic. I know you brought that up in the past. There's been stories that he didn't really turn it on until his senior year when he knew he was about to get drafted. But – Reggie White didn't turn it on until his senior year when he knew he was about to get drafted. Great comparison. Yeah, and Great he became a Hall of Famer. I mean, if you watch Reggie White as a junior as opposed to a senior, it's like a totally different player. So it leads us to today's tough question, and it has to do with Darnell Wright, who went uh, number 10. First, before I get to that, what did you think of the fit, Caleb, just in general of where he went at number 10? I think – he went to a he went to a team that's good for him and that they're going to be invested in him. I feel bad for him because I don't think Justin Fields is ever going to develop into a good quarterback. But I don't think I don't think the, the good thing for Darnell Wright is he's never going to be scapegoated for that. No one's ever going to scapegoat Darnell Wright for Justin Fields not developing. So if Chicago has to find a new quarterback in the future, Darnell Wright's still going to be fine. Yep, that's true. And he may one day sign a monster contract with another team. You know, he's on the three-year clock, basically. You've got 
Or do you have five years? I'm trying to – do you have three or five years on your rookie Isn't it? I thought it was four years, and they can pick up the option in the fifth year. Right. So he he just has to work hard to get paid through that. Justin Fields may be a distant memory in 2028, to be honest with you. I mean, they could have – Joe Milton is their quarterback by then. They could have Nico as their quarterback by then. And Darnell Wright's still going to handle the right side. And the thing about him, too, is if you're in any sort of pinch, you can play him on the left. I I just I love the pick. I told you he was going to go uh, high. I didn't think 10, but I wasn't going to be surprised in the 15 to 20 range. But a uh, huge monster pickup, and it leads us to today's tough question, and that is now. Today's tough question. Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show. Uh, a present off the hooks. All right, here we go. Today's tough question. How much does this help the balls in recruiting? Caleb Calhoun. Scale of 1 to 10. How much does this help the balls in recruiting? This is a 10. I mean, a clear cut 10. You can't underestimate how big of a deal this is. Not just because Tennessee had a top 10 pick. I think, I think we talked about this yesterday. Tennessee is going to have multiple top 10 picks, top 20 picks under Josh Heupel in the future. An offensive lineman going in the top 10 fully validates what we have said for a long time, which is this is not a gimmicky offense that Josh Hypo runs. It's cutting edge. It's ahead of the curve. It's unique, but it's not a gimmick. And this is proof. A The highest pick Josh Hypo has had in two years at Tennessee was an offensive lineman. This is the high, by the way, I, I want to bring this up, guys. In his entire tenure as head coach, Philip Fulmer never had an offensive lineman go in the first round. Not one time. Not one offensive lineman under Fulmer was drafted in the first round. You sent me that stat, and I thought that was insane. I was like, "Is has Caleb been partying this morning or something? And <laughs> But it's the first since when? You sent so me the, the Is it crazy? Crazy. It's the first since Jawan James of 2014. Those are the only two dating back to 1991. The 91 draft, Anton Davis and Charles McRae went back-to-back. And then Tennessee didn't have another offensive lineman go in the first round for 23 years. And that was during Fulmer, a former offensive lineman, his entire tenure as head coach, never had a first round offensive lineman dra- drafted in the first round. This is a huge deal. And it's huge because, look, Tennessee's going to get the receivers. They're going to get the quarterbacks. They're going to get the skill players, Dave. You and I know that, right? With Josh Heupel, you're going to get those all over the place. The question became, can they get – the high-level offensive lineman to come to Tennessee. Well, Josh Heupel turned Darnell right into a top-10 draft pick really in just one year. Let's be honest. It was really just this past year that made him a top-10 pick. He wasn't on anybody's radar the year before. And so this is a huge deal, and it's going to be a massive boost for Tennessee football in the future. <laughs> 